Can you be an atheist extremist? I love this idiot. He's just so delusional that it's, I don't know. It's cute. I've heard this so many times where people use this phrase like, oh, that person's a militant atheist or a staunch atheist or an angry atheist. Like, can you be an atheist extremist? Like, what does that even mean? It's adorable. Oh my God, it's so adorable. An atheist extremist is someone who proselytizes atheism. Atheist extremists. How do I deconvert someone? How do I get my religious family member to become an atheist? I obviously post very abrasive YouTube videos. They offend a lot of people, and that's one way. Unable to defend themselves from the relentless humor, thousands of men and women were forced to examine their religious beliefs. How can you convert your atheist friend to Christianity? According to a report by Faith Matters, the UK is seeing a surge in Brits converting to Islam. In the last year, around 5,200 people in Britain converted to Islam. As many as 100,000 have converted in the last decade. Proselytization is, is common behavior for any average religious person. Uh, so why is it that for uh, an atheist, this automatically makes them an extremist? I mean, what's the comparison here? Are we comparing Jacqueline Glenn to Ray Comfort? Or are we comparing Bill Nye to a suicide bomber? I mean, which are the extremists? Where is the extreme? This is Bill Nye. Is he an extremist? Just sitting there reading these hate tweets? Let's compare that to what we would all agree upon. This is a Muslim. And this took place in Jerusalem. And those people that he just ran down with his car, those are Jews. Just your average, everyday Jews. This is a hate crime. It's not a terrorist act. He's not trying to terrorize anybody. This guy hates Jews. And he hates Jews because of his religion. Because it has taken him to extremes. That is the definition of an extremist, right there. I want you to march into your bathroom and to look into the mirror. There! There's an atheist extremist. That's like ordering something that's extra medium or something. It just, it doesn't make sense. Those two things don't seem to go together. Yes, of course it doesn't make sense because morality binds people together into groups and then blinds them to their own idiocy. It's very simple. I've seen a lot of cartoons online where they show, if I said extremist Muslim, most people have an idea in their head of what we're talking about. I mean, we're talking about a terrorist. They don't represent most Muslims. But that's what you're thinking of. But that's not what the Muslims think of, because the Muslims are bound together in a group that blinds them to their own idiocy. Muslims say Islam is a religion of peace. The Sharia is coming to the UK. Oh, no, I don't Filmmaker Jamie Roberts followed a group of extreme Muslims around the streets of London for two years and what he found more often than not was that the moderate Muslims were the first to call these extremists out. And I just wanted to stop and pause on this old guy here. So Muslims, they, they don't see their extremists, right? Let's just play again what this old guy says. Can you see it there in the caption? Black flag you see here. One day it's gonna be on pin down the streets. Hey, you only go to the city and live here. Yeah. He says, go to Syria and live there. And I think that pretty much sums it up. The guy understands the difference between moderate Muslim and extreme Muslim. And the fact that he is himself Muslim has nothing to do with that. My dear Muslim brothers, there is a war taking place. Stop worshipping this false god democracy and come back to worshipping Allah. Islam, 
high slum salary. This is a front to recruiting people for ISIS, who are terrorists, who are killing people in their hundreds and thousands in Syria and Iraq. You've been following me around for months. Have you seen me recruit for ISIS? Brainwashed. They're brainwashed. You hear that other guy? You hear what he said? He said they're brainwashed and he believes it. He's Muslim, but he can still see the extremists within his own community, as can anyone else within any community. But the question is, how do we define extremism? How do you define an extreme atheist? It's honestly just a strange term. I would define them the same way that you define an extreme Muslim or an extreme Christian. One who is willing to do extreme acts in the name of their chosen doctrine or lack thereof in the case of atheism. And in the case of atheism, extreme behavior has not yet been witnessed. Nobody has bombed churches in the name of atheism. Nobody has committed hate crimes in the name of atheism or because atheist doctrine drove them to do it. It just has not happened yet. They don't see it. They can't see their own extremism. You think of extremist Christians. Also, again, they are on the fringe. They don't represent most Christians, but you're thinking of people who like bomb abortion clinics. Like that's the type of extremism you get with certain religious people. It's so adorable. You, you know, it's like a kitten discovering the world for the very first time. It really is. Imagine that groups labeling other groups by their most extreme positions. Wow, that never happens. And then I'm thinking, what is an atheist extremist? Because the most vocal atheists in our movement are people like Richard Dawkins, who writes some books and sometimes does interviews. And publicly calls about 7 billion people delusional. No, that's not insulting. That's about it. They have adults going, I was offended, I was offended, and I have rights. <laughs> well, so what? Be offended. Nothing happens. <laughs> You're an adult. Grow up. Deal with it. I was offended. I don't care. Nothing happens when you're offended. There's nothing. I, I went to the comedy show and, and the comedian said something about the Lord and, and I was offended. And when I woke up in the morning, I had leprosy. I mean, this is literally bombastic reasoning. Comparing your hurt feelings to actual loss of life caused by religious fanatics. Just because you're offended at what some keyboard warrior might have said about whatever the hell it is that you personally believe. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and I've seen cartoons where they're like, oh, militant atheist, gonna go get their coffee and drink it while they talk about faith. And post a billion insulting YouTube videos calling everyone idiots. That's like a militant atheist for you. Someone who's gonna tip the sacred cows in your mind. And that's really it. So I don't get this idea that they're atheist extremists. I feel obligated to point out that all war and violence starts with talk. Talk is where it always begins. It always begins with trashing the competition, saying, hey, those guys are delusional idiots and I think they suck. That's where it begins. Well, why don't we take it back even further than that? Really, it all begins when mummy and daddy decide to have a baby. Or, or we could take it back further than that. We could take it back to when the planet was just starting to evolve. And maybe that's the reason behind every single war. This is ridiculous. People have to communicate. People are not necessarily going to agree with each other. Literally everything is going to start off with words. That's how we communicate. Not just war, but also peace. To turn around and say, oh, they have an argument and therefore there's going to be a war. I mean, that's just asinine reasoning. Any simpleton can see that, surely. It doesn't begin with respect and mutual understanding. It begins with verbally assaulting the competition. Now, the argument can be made that, oh, well, we've had atheist extremists in the past. Think of like people like Pol Pot or Stalin. And again, it's, it's such a fallacy that if you do 
10 seconds of Googling, you would get responses to all of that. So f***ing adorable, man. It's like a puppy with his very first chew toy. Hey, actually, I would like to believe that rap music caused 9-11. Here, let me Google that. I knew it. I just knew it was those goddamn rappers. The most basic response is, yes, some of those people were atheists in the past, but they weren't killing people for being religious. They were killing people because for political reasons or other dogmatic reasons. I'm actually starting to feel bad about this. It's almost like I'm dealing with a mentally challenged person or something. Wow, I totally know that feeling, bro. Although, to be fair to you, uh, the way that the friendly atheist worded this particular answer, it was kind of complicated. Uh, he chose poor language in order for you to wrap your head around this as a simpleton. So allow me to elaborate for him. In the case of, for example, Muslim extremists or Christian extremists, the motive behind their actions is religious. This is why we call them religious extremists. In the case of Pol Pot, he was just as likely to murder atheists as he was religious people. He didn't ask the question. He didn't care what people believed religiously. His motivations were purely political. I, I think I'm going to push through, though. I think I might have a couple more points to make. It wasn't because they said, what? No, God doesn't exist. You believe in God? I'm going to kill you. That's not what they did. Um, so that idea just, that's not atheist extremism to me. I love how atheists always seem to claim that when some suicide bomber blows up something and he's religious, that it's done for religious reasons. But when an atheist does something horrendous, it's done for political reasons. I would hazard a guess that it's always done for political reasons and blaming a person's religion is really the delusional thing to do. People are bound together around certain likes and dislikes, okay? And it's really easy to say that their religion made them do it. But that's not remotely plausible. People do things because they're f***ing pissed off. People do things for revenge or political reasons. And then they go to their peers. Sometimes it's their co-religionists. You know, if they're in a band, maybe it's their band members. If a heavy metal guitarist killed his wife and his band members helped him do it because, I don't know, she cheated on him. You wouldn't blame heavy metal music for it. This is a ridiculous example of goalpost shifting or switching the argument entirely. We were talking about extremists a second ago, and now you're talking fallaciously about whole groups of people so these imaginary band members in this heavy metal band why would we not call those heavy metal extremists if it became if there was some kind of pattern to it and groups of heavy metal bands were going around killing girlfriends who cheated on them we might refer to that phenomenon as heavy metal extremists thereby saying in the sentence that these are not your typical heavy metal listeners but there are some extreme elements within that who are doing this who are perpetrating these crimes this is the difference to me between the religious extremists and what you are calling atheist extremists we are committing no crimes we're doing nothing different from what any other individual on the planet is capable of doing. It's just rational behaviour. We enjoy dialogue, we enjoy debate on these subjects for many, many different reasons. But the one thing that we all have in common is that we follow the rules, at least to the extent that we're not going around killing people, we're not doing any crimes in the name of atheism. That is not happening. The only thing we're trying to do, some of us, is enjoy the conversation, enjoy the debate, and maybe, just maybe, wake one or two people up from this fairy tale called religion. And usually if anyone says that phrase, militant atheist, uh, extremist atheist, that's a red flag. That's a warning sign that whoever's saying it has no idea what they're talking about. Because they're not one of us, obviously. And if they're not one of us, then they're completely delusional. It's very simple. By the laws and bylaws of our groupishness, we must ignore anything any outside group says because they are completely delusional and do not understand us. 
This phenomenon is called psychological projection, wherein negative personality criticism causes that same critical trait to be more strongly perceived in other people. To make matters even more interesting, projection also has the added bonus of facilitating the denial of that very same criticism the subject receives. If you just look across the playground, you'll see that everyone pretty much looks the same. They're all wearing the same uniform, they're the same age, they all have the same accents, they're all the same color. There's nothing much to distinguish them. So one of the things that's really important to them is to make some differences, to give themselves a sense of being distinctive. And the way they do that is to join different groups and to mark out very important but small differences between each of the groups. I get names called at me, but it doesn't really bother me that much because if they feel that they have to pick on me because I'm not like them, then it's their own problem. Anna's proud of her independence and ability to mix. But without realising it, even she's part of a group, a group of loners. Sometimes these groups are real groups, like these ones out here, like the grungers, for example, and they all sit together and they do everything together. Other times they can be groups that are more kind of in our heads. So some of the people out here, for example, might be treated as loners or counted as loners, but you'll find that they themselves have connections that give them that sense of security, the sense that they, they know what they're doing, they're doing the right kind of thing. Look, I get it. Atheism, to you Americans, is like the fat kid on the playground. We're the soft target, the easy pickings. And just like every other group of people, we're made up of flawed human beings. Each of us is capable of having biases. Each of us is able to fall into groupthink without even realizing we're doing it. But unlike all the religious groups, we're also very good at looking inward we're very good at recognizing our flaws and criticizing each other on them. People say there's a lot of infighting in atheism. I say good. I say let there always be infighting in atheism. I want to see all the subjects debated vigorously for eternity if it must be. I'd just like to end by saying on a personal note that I find your attitude to be absolutely patronizing and irritating. How can you sit there with the word respect on the screen every time you speak? How can you sit there and say things like it's words and it's lack of respect that caused wars in the world? When you started, the very first thing you said to the friendly atheist of all people in the world was this. I love this idiot. He's just so delusional that it's, I don't know, it's cute. I'd just like to say a massive thank you to everybody who's made it this far through the video. This has been a response to Atheism Atheism's video society's cancer preaching atheism which i have linked at the top here and below are all the links to all the content creators who have made this video possible i'd just like to give them all a huge shout out as well thank you ever so much everybody for watching thank you to all the content creators that have made this possible and thank you to youtube for existing you guys are great please like comment subscribe and let this guy know that i'm serious this is not just mocking him, these are serious issues and he should really respond to this. Thank you.